In this video, we'll learn about the bridge rectifier. Now you may recall the half wave rectifier on the left, which is nice and simple, requires only one diode, but on the other hand, it only rectifies the positive half cycles of the input sinusoid. So therefore, if you think about it in terms of the average DC output level at VO, it's not very high because the negative half cycles of the input VS are kind of being wasted. You may also recall the full wave rectifier shown here on the right. That addresses this shortcoming of the half wave rectifier because the negative half cycles also appear flipped over at the output. So we've got a lot more DC content in the output signal VO here. The drawback is, first of all, we need a second diode D2, but perhaps more importantly, the transformer required has to generate uh, both the positive and negative half cycles. So uh, it has to have a center tap, and in general, that's going to make the transformer component larger and or more expensive. The bridge rectifier is a clever combination of diodes that combines the benefits of both. First of all, you'll notice that the transformer here has only one secondary winding. There's no center tap required. Also, the polarity of the diodes ensures that both the positive and negative half cycles of the sinusoid result in positive current flowing through the resistor R, generating a positive current with the polarity indicated here. There's a downside in that four diodes are required, uh, and that also makes the analysis a little more complicated. So let's go through it step by step. First, we'll consider the positive half cycles of the sinusoid at Vs. And we'll in particular think about what happens when Vs is relatively large and positive, specifically where it's greater than two forward diode drops. Now in the case of silicon diodes using a constant forward voltage drop model, that would be about 1.4 volts, 2 times 0 0.7. So in a case like that, if you look at the schematic on the left, you may notice that both diodes D1 and D2 would be forward biased. And so over here on the right, they're replaced by their constant voltage drop, forward voltage drop models. D1 and D2 are on and conducting. On the other hand, diodes D3 and D4 are exposed to reverse bias voltages. So therefore, they're both turned off with no current flowing through them. And we can model them as simple open circuits. The result is shown here in the top right, where current can flow from the secondary winding through diode D1 and then through the resistor generating a positive output voltage at VO. And then finally, through diode D2 and back into the secondary winding here. So the output in this case, VO, is equal to the input VS, but it experiences two forward voltage drops, VD, along the way. So again, using our constant forward voltage drop model, VO is Vs minus 1.4 volts. So that's case one. Case two, we may consider, is when Vs has large absolute value but is negative. That is large enough so that a forward voltage drop appears across D3 and D4 to make them conducting or on in the forward direction. Under this circumstance, we would find that D1 and D2 both have reverse bias voltages applied to them. And so therefore, they'd both be off. The off diodes can be modeled with open circuits. 
the on diodes modeled with constant voltage drops of about 0.7 volts. And the result in this case is that current flows from positive current flows from the negative terminal of the secondary winding up through D3 through the load resistor R and up through D4 and back to the secondary winding. So again, the polarity of the diodes is chosen cleverly so that in this case too, that is the negative half cycles of Vs, current still flows in the same direction to the load resistor R and the polarity of VO is still positive. Specifically, VO is equal to negative Vs minus the two diode voltage drops, so 1.7 volts, according to our constant voltage drop model. Um, finally, uh, there is case three, a trivial case where Vs is insufficient to turn off two diodes in series. That is, its absolute voltage is less than about 1.4 volts. In that case, all the diodes are off, no current is flowing anywhere, and therefore VO is simply equal to zero. So now we're ready to think about what happens with a sinusoidal voltage applied on the secondary. And again, we can think about what happens in condition one, that's the large parts of the positive half cycles of Vs. Specifically where we find Vs exceeding two forward diode drops, 1.4 volts. And then we've got the situation shown over here on the top right, where we found that Vo equals Vs minus 1.4 volts. Then we've got the negative half cycles where Vs is below negative 1.4 volts. So then we're in case two shown here. And again, we found that VO follows negative VS. So that flips it around or rectifies it. But we do lose the 1.4 volts across diodes D3 and D4 in this case for their forward voltage drops. And then in between, we've got these periods of time which we've called case three. Where all the diodes are off and VO is therefore zero. So clearly the bridge rectifier is a full wave rectifier, but we, instead of losing just one diode drop, the bridge rectifier loses two diode forward voltage drops because when conducting there's two diodes in series with a load resistor R. Uh, another drawback of the bridge rectifier compared to the full wave rectifier is that four diodes are required instead of uh, just two. On the other hand, it obviates the need for a center tap in the secondary winding, which may be uh, more significant savings.